Okay, now that we've gone through some basics of phase diagrams, uh, I want to move to something a little bit more complicated. So in this case, I want to talk about isomorphous binary phase diagrams. So the first question we want to ask is, what exactly is an isomorphous binary phase diagram? Well, the binary uh, tells us that there's two components. Uh, the word isomorphous tells us that there's complete solubility of the components in both the solid and the liquid phases. And what that really means is that the solid and liquid phases extend from 0 to 100 weight percent. So we can see this uh, on this example plot here to the right. And what we're looking at is a example copper nickel phase diagram. And so uh, on the x-axis, we have the weight percent nickel. And on the y-axis, we have temperature. And what you can see is that no matter how much nickel we add, we are able to dissolve or form a solid solution all the way up to 100% uh, nickel. So we have pure copper on, on the left-hand side and pure nickel on the right-hand side. And we can do the same thing in the liquid region. Um, a couple features to note about uh, uh, the, this particular phase diagram. Uh, that number one is that there are two phases. So in this case, we have a solid phase. This is in, in this particular copper nickel phase diagram. It's an FCC solid solution that we'll call alpha. And we have a liquid phase that we'll just call L. Um, there are three phase regions. So one is just pure alpha and the other is pure liquid, but there's also this third region now that is some combination of liquid plus alpha. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about uh, some uh, characteristics of an isomorphous binary phase diagram. Um, the first uh, is that any time we're working with metallic alloys, uh, solid solutions like like alpha here, are going to be typically represented by the Greek letters alpha, beta, gamma, etc. So that's that's one uh, definition to note. Um, th the other is that there's a boundary line that separates the liquid plus alpha phase from the completely liquid phase, and we call that the liquidus line. And similarly, there's a boundary that separates the liquid plus alpha phase from the alpha, the complete alpha solution. We call that the solidus line. Uh, and then finally, uh, the other feature to note and characteristic of, of these uh, isomorphous binary phase diagrams is that the extremes uh, of the on the x-axis, so at zero and 100%. Uh, at the extremes, if we look at the intersection of the solidus and liquidus lines, that actually corresponds to the melting temperature. That makes sense, right? If we have pure copper and we raise the temperature to its melting point, it's going to convert from its FCC solid state to its liquid state. And similarly, if we have a pure nickel solution, we can raise the temperature up and then finally it melts and turns into a liquid. So it's not too surprising that the, the extremes of the phase diagram uh, where they intersect the temperature represent the melting temperature of each component. Now we're going to go ahead to uh, talk about some of the features of interest on a phase diagram. Basically, this is asking um, why do we, what, why do, we, why and how do we use a phase diagram? Um, there's three primary features of interest, at least that are going to be uh, the first things that you're going to compute. And it's really important to remember that these have to be evaluated in the order that I'm going to present them. So the first is which phases are present. Now this is a a pretty simple. Uh, 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 task. We can just locate whatever the composition is. Let's say on the x-axis, let's pick 20% weight percent, uh, 20 weight percent nickel, and maybe 1400 degrees C. And we can see this that we locate right here where the red dot is. That's going to be liquid. So obviously the phases present are liquid. If we had something that let's say 1050 at the same composition, uh, that would be uh, phases present would be alpha and alpha only. But if, for example, we were to raise it to, let's say, 1200 at the same composition, then we'd have two phases present, both liquid and alpha. So pretty straightforward there. Uh, the next feature that's, that's important from that is what's the phase composition? And that just means what's the concentration of each component in each phase? 
So again, it's very simple. If if I have a let's pick now 40 percent a weight percent or 40 weight percent nickel rather, uh, we we pick this solution uh, at 1100 degrees. Uh, the the phase composition of alpha at that is just whatever the the concentration of the entire system is. So it would be 40 weight percent nickel. But if we raise up to now let's go say 1250, now we're in the liquid in the alpha region. We'd like to know what's the the concentration of nickel in the liquid and the concentration of nickel in the alpha phases and those typically won't be the same uh, if we go further up into the liquid region let's say to 1400 degrees c then again the the phase composition is easy we can just read it uh, off of uh, the chart okay and finally what uh, the final feature of interest is the phase amounts, and that's just basically the weight fraction of each phase in the system. So again, if we go to this middle region here, uh, where we have both liquid and alpha, not only do we want to know what the nickel concentration is in the liquid and the nickel concentration is in the alpha, we'd like to know how much liquid relative to alpha there actually is. So those are the three features that we want to talk about uh, and, and uh, develop some procedures for evaluating uh, them on the basis of uh, these phase diagrams. So let's first talk about computing the phases present. Uh, that's very straightforward. Uh, we just locate temperature and composition of the system, uh, C0, on the phase diagram and read off the phases present. So uh, let's just choose an example at point A at 1100 degrees C, 60 weight percent nickel, then we have we can look at the phase diagram and see that we have alpha is our only phase present. Uh, in contrast, if we choose 1250 at 35 weight percent uh, nickel, then we have two phases present, namely liquid and alpha. So that's all that all that there is to, to determining the phases that are present. Um, the procedure for computing the phase composition is a little bit more involved, but not not too t uh, uh, challenging. So obviously, as we said before, if only one fa phase is present, then the phase composition is just C0, the composition of the system. So let's choose example one here, where we have system A at 1320 degrees C and 35 weight percent nickel. Well, the phase composition uh, of the liquid, that would be Cl, um, is going to be equal to the phase composition of the system C0, which is just 35 weight percent nickel. Similarly, if we choose another example, uh, let's say 11, uh, example B here at 1190 degrees C, uh, 35 weight percent nickel again, then the phase composition uh, is just, it's all alpha, so the phase composition of alpha is the same as the phase composition of the system C0, which is just equal to 35 weight percent nickel. So hopefully that's straightforward. But now let's go ahead and look at a system that has two phases present. So to compute the composition, of each phase, uh, when we have two phases present, we have to do the following. So let's let's uh, select a system. We'll call it system D. Uh, so there's the temperature. Uh, we're at 35 weight percent of the system, just like we were before. But now our our um, system resides in a region that has two phases. So we want to first. The first step is to draw what's called a tie line. And all that is is a line that, that runs along the isotherm, so the constant temperature line, that uh, through the temperature of interest uh, and through the composition of interest, and it's going to stop whenever it intersects a phase boundary. So here's the liquidus line and the solidus line, and the line stops when it intersects those phase boundary lines. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is once we do that, we project the intersections uh, of the phase boundary lines back down to the composition axis. So we we take the liquidus line intersection, project it back down to the uh, a composition axis, and we see that there it comes in at 28%. Similarly, uh, we do the same thing on the solidus line, and, and, and it intersects at 39%. So once we do that, we can simply then read off the phase compositions. So in this example, uh, this is roughly at 1,230 degrees uh, and 35 weight percent nickel, we we can read off that the uh, composition of the liquid in this uh, particular system is 28 weight percent nickel, and the composition composition of the alpha in this system is 39 percent alpha. Okay, so 
So that's how we compute phase compositions. So that what that also means is that they don't have the same amount of nickel. So uh, the, the liquid phase has less nickel, the solid phase has more in this particular case. So the remaining question is, what is the relative fraction of liquid and alpha in the system? So now we, we know what the system contains, liquid and alpha. We know the composition of each phase. And now we need to know what's the relative amounts, what's the weight fraction uh, uh, of each phase. So now that we understand how to compute uh, phase compositions, we now want to learn how to compute phase amounts. So uh, if we look at the, the, the graphic here, again, just some example phase diagram, weight percent nickel on the x-axis and temperature on the y-axis, uh, we locate some uh, state of the system given by D at some temperature TD and some composition C0. And we've already talked about that the composition of the liquid and the composition of the alpha or the solid are going to be different. So we'd like to find out how much liquid there is and how much solid there is. So really all we have to do to develop a methodology for this is ensure conservation of mass. So we can do that just by simply solving the system of equations that says that the weight fraction of the alpha phase times the composition of the alpha phase plus the weight fraction of the liquid phase times the composition of the liquid phase is equal to the system composition C0. And then we put a constraint on the, the weight fractions that the weight fraction of the alpha phase plus the weight fraction of the liquid phase must equal 1, right? Because there, we, we, we didn't lose any material in the process. If you go through and solve these equations, you'll end up with what's called the lever rule. In this case, uh, it ends up looking like the weight fraction of a liquid is just uh, C alpha minus C naught, so this distance, C alpha minus C naught, divided by the total distance. And the weight fraction of alpha is this distance here, divided by the total distance of the tie line. Um, it's called the lever rule because you can think of each side of the tie line as a lever or some sort of a, a teeter-totter. And uh, that's where it, it uh, derives its name from. Uh, so, uh, so I'm giving you some distances here, R and S, that are just equivalent to these difference, uh, differences in compositions, and then just kind of showing you graphically that it acts as a teeter-totter. And it makes sense, right? If, we, if we, the composition gets very, very close, let's say, to the liquid, um, then you're going to expect that most of the material is going to be liquid. Um, so it makes sense that this large distance from the alpha to the, would be the, uh, composition of the system, uh, that's going to indicate a high high fraction of liquid, whereas uh, the small distance from the liquid side to the um, composition of the system is going to indicate a relatively small fraction of alpha. And that's all that's that's happening here. So let's do a quick example, return to our example that we'd done uh, previously for our phase compositions. So remember that we had drawn our tie line at, at temperature D. This was 35 weight percent nickel, and the alpha phase had a 39 weight percent nickel, and the liquid phase had 28 uh, weight percent nickel. And we want to find out how much liquid there is and how much alpha there is. So we just simply apply the uh, the lever rule as as derived previously, uh, and we end up with that the weight fraction of the liquid is going to be equal to uh, 0.36 or 36 percent and let's see if that makes sense well you can look at the the location of the the system the system composition on the tie line and see that it's a little bit closer to the alpha phase so we expect there to be more alpha and less liquid so this at least um, meets a gut check that it's less than half um, we apply the same rule again to the alpha phase and find out that the weight fraction of alpha is 64%. And just eyeballing that curve, that looks um, reasonable. So let me summarize now the, the, the three features of interest and in how we go about uh, getting them. So in terms of phases present, we just use the composition of the system and the temperature, and we just read it directly off the phase diagram. In terms of the phase composition, if there's only one phase, we can also just read that directly off the phase diagram. If we have two phases, we need to draw a tie line and then project down to the composition axis to get the phase composition of each phase. In terms of phase amounts or phase, phase fractions, um, if there's only one phase, then the phase fraction is just 1 or 100%. 
Uh, if there's two phases, then we apply the level rule that we just discussed uh, using the phase compositions that we'd previously computed. Uh, and that's really all there is uh, to, to most of the analysis uh, of these phase diagrams.